All right, guys, I got our next guest of the night here on Pure Evil MMA, Anthony Garrett, who's going to be fighting Bo Kunt, Chamrock FC 289, going down May 20th. Thank you for joining me today, Anthony. How are you doing? I'm doing uh, really well. Um, you pronounced the best name wrong. It's Coons. <laughs> you got me cracking up on that one, the, the, the way you said his last name. There, but, yeah, I might say that to him, but I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> There's actually a UFC fighter with the same last name. I thought it was pronounced Cunt. There was actually a fight yeah. that was set up against Bang versus Cunt at one point in the UFC last year, which uh, I thought it was pronounced this way. So I guess I'm wrong. Oh, I gotcha. <laughs> but, um, you know, going into this fight, when you found out they were matched up against Bo, were you familiar with him or did you not know much about him? Um, the only way I knew about him was through the Shamrock guys because he's been fighting for them for a while. And then he actually fought um, one of my teammates, it kind of kind of flash knocked him out about there. Well, my teammate Kevin Wolfcamp, and he played for uh, Camrock as well. He was actually the uh, amateur he waited a while back. Um, back when I first started my amateur career. But yeah, Bo had uh, flash knocked him out in the first round with the left hook. So I knew what you know he was capable of by that. So compared to uh, you know your last previous fights. What do you think is going to be different about your performance here tonight? And you don't have to go too far into it, but pretty much, what can everybody expect out of you when they tune in to watch you? Um, you know, definitely more calm. Uh, my last fight, I got a little too aggressive right off the bat and got clipped really bad with an uppercut. I'm going to really use my range because I'm 6'5 and Bo's only 5'10. Uh, so I'm really going to stay on the outside and use my jab to keep him back. Um, and then if I need to, take him to the ground and finish him the way I have all my fights. <clears throat> and compared to your style, how does Bo match up against you? I mean, what kind of style do, would you say that he has from what you know? Um, well, when we both start throwing hands, we both get a little wild. Um, we're kind of uh, like, he's a brawler for sure. And then I've grown up fighting a lot, like just like, you know, in the streets and stuff like that. And um, just unfortunate situations, obviously. Um, but when I do start throwing hands, I do get a little wild as well. Um, the only thing that separates us is my grappling and my ground game is, I would say, a lot better than his. Um, so definitely if it stays standing, I guarantee you one of us is going to get knocked out for sure. So you brought up growing up, and I live here in the city. I see a lot of kids struggling uh, here in the city. How did you deal with it back then? And do you have any advice for anybody that's being bullied right now in the inner cities or even the suburbs? Yeah, um, I grew up first in the inner cities uh, in a place called Turner. Um, it's downtown Wyandotte, which is a lot of mixture of black, whites, and Hispanics. And then I actually moved to the suburbs as I got older. Um, it doesn't matter where you go. The bullying exists uh, no matter what in so many shapes and forms. And basically what I just tell a lot of people, and especially the young kids that I do train right now because I'm a personal trainer, um, I tell them just to avoid the situation at all costs unless it's time to defend yourself. And that's how I got into most of my fights growing up was um, I was either defending myself or honestly about 80% of the time I was defending someone else and I had enough of it. And the bully was, you know, either my size or a little bigger and it always just ended up, you know, unfortunately as a fist fight, um, just obviously because we're young and immature, but just to avoid it, you know, and try to handle it, handle it through words. <clears throat> Yeah, you know what? Nowadays, people are dealing with something a little different, you know, with social media and how, how words are really hurting people. Yeah, um, definitely big time. Um, you know, the way social media is nowadays is a little crazy, in my opinion. I mean, I grew up, you know, I'm only 27. I grew up when it first all started. <laughs> and um, the way social media is bullying is getting out of hand nowadays is it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I have a little brother who just graduated high school and the things he dealt with, I mean, I... I don't even know if I could have dealt with it, honestly. I might have lost my temper too many times or, you know, things might have gotten out of hand. Um, just because I do, I have, a you know, an anger issue when it comes to that kind of stuff, when it comes to bullying. Um, a lot of kids getting picked on, made fun of through Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. So, um, in my opinion, it's out of control, honestly. Yeah, it, it's not difficult. And that's why I like asking the fighters because you guys – you know, growing up inside, you know, the MMA world or even karate, Muay Thai, whatever, you're learning a lot more there than a lot of these kids are learning in school with how to deal with real life situations. Yeah, I mean, I grew up doing martial arts with my dad. 
from early age. And then I, you know, I wrestled in high school and played football in high school. So that kept me out of trouble, at least in school. But, you know, it just, like I said, when push comes to shove, you know, when you're in any kind of environment, you really do sometimes just feel the need to defend yourself or, you know, say your best friend or an individual. And usually when you step in to defend somebody, that bully who's starting everything doesn't like anyone to interfere. And it, like I said, it just leads to bad news. So we're only nine days away from your upcoming fight. How are you feeling right now? Um, I'm feeling great, actually, um, better than ever, honestly. I, uh, after my last fight, I had decided to change a lot of things in my life and my diet even, and just exercising and training in general. And one of the key things that I did was I switched all my supplements to organics. Um, I don't have like a sponsorship or anything. I just read up on that and switched to all organic and natural supplements. And the funny thing is I got bigger, I'm stronger, I'm faster, and then also... I changed my diet up. I'm sponsored by a company called Paleo Fit out of Kansas City, and, you know, it's all pre-packaged, pre-made food. So the crazy thing is, you know, I'm paying a tiny bit amount of money because they're sponsoring me, and I get 15 large meals every week because I'm a heavyweight. You know, I ask for the largest portions possible, and, you know, they deliver them to me at my gym uh, every Monday. And, I mean, you know, 15 meals added with some sweet potatoes here and there that I eat every day. I mean, it, it fills you up and it gives you a ridiculous amount of energy. Um, the way theirs is, is they're just high, high protein, high antioxidants and carbs. You know, no grains, no pastas, no cheese, nothing like that. So that's really helped me a lot feel 10 times better than I ever have before. So getting ready for this fight, um, you know, a lot of fighters, they see the fight going around a certain way. You kind of gave us, you know, a little bit, but you see this fight going the distance or do you, do you see a, you finishing the fight? Um, I definitely don't see it going the distance. I mean, Bo is a big uh, banger and brawler, um, and I guarantee you he'll want to close the gap and try to throw some overhands, some uppercuts at me, and try whatever he can to land that big shot. And then, like I said, I'm going to go for the knockout as well, just by keeping my distance, though, and, you know, slipping a jab or stepping in and, you know, throwing a left hook or even, you know, an overhand as well. I've been working on tons and tons of different angles and different types of you know strikes to land on him um but i definitely see it getting finished first round or second round um for sure well we're looking forward to it shamrock fc has been doing a great job setting up these cards putting on a lot of exciting fights and we wish you the best of luck and skill what we like to do at this point in the interview is we hand the imaginary microphone over to you if you have any shout outs anything at all you want to wish luck to your opponent the floor is all yours yeah, I definitely want to make sure, you know, to say good luck to him. I mean, he needs, I mean, he definitely wants, I want him to, you know, stay uninjured and stay healthy so we can, you know, get in there and have some fun. And then I also want to thank uh, my sponsors who are Title Boxing Club 10 and Lenexa. Um, they don't actually just sponsor me. I work for them as well, which allows me to train all day, every day. And they paid while I'm working there, teaching classes and doing private training. And then I want to train um, Now Printing. It's this, uh, one of my best friends' printing companies. And then Milestone Marketing Group, Teague Electric, Paleo Fit, and then, of course, my MMA gym, uh, American Jiu-Jitsu, which is owned and operated by Steve Crawford, who's been my coach for three years now. And then, finally, just want to thank all my friends and family, and especially my girlfriend, Jana Harrison, who's been helping me tremendously through this entire fight camp and others. It takes a special woman. We wish you the best of luck and best of skill come May 20th for Shamrock FC 289. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you very much.